Oh my god, hey, welcome back to my kingdom of stagey isolation. If you're seeing my face for the first time, my name is Mickey Joe. This is my YouTube channel, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. I also recently celebrated my 25th birthday, and as part of my birthday celebration weekend, because I'm extra, I took myself to go and see Hair at the Turbine Theatre. Well, at the at the jetty outside the Turbine Theatre. It was Battersea. It was in Battersea. So for today's video, I'm talking all about the Turbine Theatre's production of Hair, but without the nudity, because it was, it was outside, and, and you know, it would be, it would be cold. I went to see Hair, socially distant Hair. So I want to talk a little bit about the show and the setup they had there, but before I do, I want to show you the curtain call footage I managed to record, as well as the cast's curtain call performance of Let the Sunshine In. <laughs> So I really enjoyed this show. I thought it was really different to a lot of the other stuff that is being produced during lockdown. Obviously, because of social distancing regulations, it was outside, it was on the jetty uh, near Battersea Power Station, which is really long. And so they had a stage set up and lots of rows of deck chairs, which is a really unique theatrical experience. I'm from the beach. I grew up at the beach. I am no stranger to a deck chair. Do I like it for theater performance? As a novelty, yes. Practically no. I'm a tall person. I never have a problem seeing over people's heads. In a deck chair, I was like, because you sit like this and you're like getting comfortable. So I was fighting the urge to slouch and try and see over people's heads. Um, and I was also a long way back. I was quite a long way back. They didn't initially sell single seats for this because of pricing and I didn't begrudge them that. But then a few days after it had initially gone on sale, they put some single seats on the website. So I grabbed one of those. I think I was in row W. I was in a lovely yellow deck chair. And it did feel a little bit far from the stage, but listen, after six months, I'm just happy to be within a mile radius of people singing musical theater. They had this really cool stage set up with a screen behind that was projecting loads of very clever graphics that I think my friend Sam helped to make. Somebody told me afterwards that he was involved. I need to, I need to check on that. And they were really cool and they helped explain what the cast was singing about because a, a lot of the vocals are very quick. Um, it probably wouldn't have been a bad idea to have a camera set up and sort of relaying a feed of the performance to the big screen so people who were really far back could see it, but I don't know how possible that was being outdoors on a jetty. It was this really interesting setup. If you don't know much about the show Hair, it's all about the 60s and flower power and sort of the anti-Vietnam War movement and freedom and love and peace, and it's very... Moments of the show are very anti-industry and anti-manufacturing and capitalism and so to see it set up this sort of mini hippie tribe commune with London's industrial skyline in the background and Battersea Power Station looming over it, towering above it, it was so cool. Every time someone said something loud enough it echoed off of Battersea Power Station which was all lit up and in scaffolding. It was this crazy juxtaposition of things. In terms of just unique theatrical experiences, every few minutes the Uber boat would go past, which I just thought was hilarious. Hair itself as a show is one I really love. I've seen it before, I saw the tour, 
I've listened to the cast recording a huge amount. I was listening to the cast recording just before I got tickets for this and then it went on sale and I was like, yes, I love hair. I don't know if hair works as a concert like this. It was really just about the music because the little bits of dialogue they'd kept in didn't make that much sense. They'd cut the show down to 90 minutes like a lot of other shows have been so that they can do it socially distant, no interval, all that stuff. That makes sense. But they kept in some of the dialogue so it has a plot. Now, Hare's plot barely makes sense in the first place when you have all of the characters and all of the staging. In a concert setting, it was really, even I who knew the plot was forgetting what was happening and thinking the people around me who don't know this show, if there's people who don't know the show, must be very confused. But just, I just enjoyed the music and that was enough. And the vocals, let me tell you, were great. A lot of things have been said about this casting because it used a cast of exclusively very well-known and up-and-coming performers and there's been a lot of dialogue recently about giving new talent a chance and using a different and a wider pool of people. Most of this cast had worked with producer Paul Taylor Mills before in some capacity, whether it was on Heathers, whether it was in MT Fest, whether it was on previous shows he'd produced. It seemed mostly to be cast from, I don't want to say his friends, but possibly a, a, a fairly small circle of known performers. But it was also very clever casting because he's cast alumni from Six and Heathers and the cast from And Juliet and Be More Chill. And the overlap of fandoms meant that this sold very well. And as much as people love to knock this casting, everyone was great and really well cast in these roles. Jodie Steele, as Sheila Franklin. I'm, she's so well cast, I'm convinced, I was convinced before that she'd played the role before. I thought, surely Jodie Steele's already done hair. It's such a great show for her. And she hasn't, but she was fantastic. She was so, so good as Sheila. She's got some of sort of the best ballady songs in the show. And she has a song called Easy To Be Hard. And she took a phrase of it up the octave and I died in a deck chair. I collapsed even further into the deck chair. I could see nothing and then realized that was impractical and I had to sit more back up. Jordan Luke Cage was really good as Claude. Matt Croak was really great as Berger. Normally he'd get to interact with the audience more, but he did really well to sort of cultivate an energy level without being able to do that, obviously. Grace was really cute. She had this lovely song that even normally in the show makes no sense. And I'm glad they kept it in because Grace sounded great singing it, but it serves no purpose in the show. No purpose whatsoever. Millie O'Connell. <laughs> If you're looking for someone to give you a committed performance, look no further than Millie O'Connell. She was playing this pregnant, infatuated stoner girl, and she was just crazed. She had the thickest southern accent. She sounded like Rogue from the 90s X-Men cartoon, and she was just full crazy. And I loved it. And you know what? It's the energy level I've come to expect from Millie O'Connell, if I'm being honest. Leighton Williams was great as well. Obviously they're on this small stage, they couldn't dance much, but when they got into these more sort of upbeat and energetic numbers, he jumped onto the back of the stage, which looked precarious and unsafe, but he was doing these amazing dancing things and just sort of bringing an energy just by choreographing himself. I don't know if that was choreographed or just him ad-libbing. The show was directed by Arlene Phillips, who obviously has a strong dance background. Blake Patrick Anderson, who played Michael in the recent production of Be More Chill in London, was amazing as well. He was really well cast. He played a couple of roles. He played Woof and he also played Margaret Mead, who is a woman who's played in the show by a man. And he was really great as both. It was just a really good piece of casting. I think my biggest shout out has to go to Danielle Fiamania, who is currently in the cast of Anne Juliet, who is going to be understudy Elsa in the London production of Frozen. This is her second socially distant concert show since theatres reopened about five minutes ago. That speaks to the talent level and how excited everyone is about this sort of rising talent star that she is. She was incredible. She was so, 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 so good in this show. She sang Aquarius and then she sang a couple other numbers and just like her physicality and the vocals were everything. She is so good. Not someone I knew much about before because I'd only seen the little ensemble bits she had in Anne Juliet, but now is she on my radar? Oh boy! I tweeted immediately afterwards, I am joining the Danielle Fiamania hype train. It was such a great cast, it's one of those things it would be lovely to revisit if we get the chance to see them in a sort of more fully staged production. The whole thing made me think that it would be a great show to do somewhere like Regent's Park in an outdoor setting, because it gained a lot from being in the open air, even if it was very at odds with the sort of industrial backdrop that it had. 
but the vocals were so good, the score is fantastic, the band were amazing, everything about the experience felt really safe, felt really comfortable, I even ran into some friends that I got to catch up with, which is something I've missed about theatre. The whole thing, I could not fault it whatsoever. If you get a chance to see any of the other shows that are being done at the jetty outside the turbine, I really recommend it as a venue. It all felt really safe, it's really easy, really comfortable, it's in Battersea, you can take the train, you don't have to get there by boat. If you want to take the Uber boat, I don't blame you, it seems fun. I'd love to take the Uber boat. You don't have to wear a mask during the performances because it's open air. They have cocktail stands and I think vegan hot dog stands. They had all sorts of stuff there. It's a really fun, just novelty new theatrical experience. So I can recommend. If anyone else saw Hair at the Turbine Theatre, let me know your thoughts on the production. Let me know if you agreed with what I thought in the comment section down below. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my channel for lots more stagey content coming very soon, including more theatre trips, more performance footage as well. I hope that everyone is continuing to stay safe and that you have a stagey day. For 10 more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching, have a stagey day. Subscribe!